looking more closely at the grammatical deception involved in all of this, what would be your opinions or comments on the way that all capitals signify corporations? Whether we are referring to what some people would say is a government or a person, give us your, give us your overview of the way in which the capital letters, the uppercase, Gog Latin, the glossa, the, the grammatical deception. Yep. Okay. Now, first of all, this is uh, on the internet or from the internet. It is the Australian government's page from the Treasury, and it's pretty current. It's today's date, and this will show you documents relating to registration with the Security and Exchange Commission of the Australian government as a privately owned American company. And this is pretty interesting because here it is, clearly stating that documents relating to registration with the SEC of the Australian government as a privately owned American company. Yep. Now, how the hell did that happen? That the government is a privately owned American company and it's on the government treasury's website off the page. I was, I, was going going to, I was going to ask you to clarify what website are you reading from? Uh, Treasury.government.au Straight ahead. So now it's corporate. There is no government. Government obviously means, govern means to control and meant means mind. So government equals mind control. It's got no authority. It's got nothing to do with real authority. Real authority is vested in something under common law called a jury and a jury would be some a, a group of guys maybe like 10 people that make a decision and that decision that they make should be unanimous in other words if one of the 10 doesn't agree with the outcome there's no decision and that's different from democracy democracy is the that's mob rule that's what what pirates do on a ship when they when they select a new captain uh, six guys says we want that guy, and four says no ways, but it doesn't matter because six is a bigger number than four. And this is what they deceived us that we've all got the right to vote and the right to democracy, democracy, democracy. Democracy is bullshit. There's no such thing. It, it's a lynch mob. And the world fell for it, hook, line, and sinkers. With, oh, we can vote, you know, let's choose a government, let's do this, do this. What we didn't know, there is no government, it was just a corporation, just a privately owned American company which has happened since 1933 across the planet with every country on earth except I think North Korea and Iran at the moment are the only two remaining independents as I mentioned earlier at some point. So this incorporates all of us as citizens of a country? Like what? How can you be a citizen of a country under a government when the government is a American company? There's something wrong with this picture. So you aren't a citizen of anything. You're a citizen, you're a member of a corporation. That is what your citizenship means. And interestingly enough, what does the word ship mean? Any guess? Well, you may be referring to a, a vessel. In maritime. <laughs> there we go. You see, all, anything attached to a ship, like relationship, citizenship, friendship, whatever, the reason they call that ship thing at the end is because the bloody thing can sink. You're on the water. You're not on land. And so anything that you're doing to do with a ship is clearly written in maritime and clearly written in, in water law. Now this is where the all caps entity comes from. Because you can't interact as a living being or a man, a woman with a corporation or a dead corpse. Because it's like you in the backyard and you're kicking a dead dog and you want this thing to get up and run. It ain't going to do it. It can't. But yet they want us to think that we are able to interact with a corporation. You can't interact with a corporation. There's no jurisdiction. But you have to consent and you've got to, under deceptive grammar, rules of, rules of grammar, use of grammar, you've got to pretend that you are a corporation and you're acting on behalf of the corporation. And that is when they did, what they did with the bond, the birth bond, is to bond you into slavery and to sell that document as a bonded stock. That's why they call the stock exchange stocks and bonds. We are the stock. 
is bonded on the stock exchange. But they need to use a different name from who we really are. They can't use our real name, our Christian name, or our first name, given name. Because it's not the name of a corporation. So they incorporated our name, used that entity in a different way of writing it in all capital letters, all, um, in all uppercase text. And they've told all of us that this is who you are, that's your identity, that's your identity document, that's your passport, that's your driver license, that's your gun license, whatever. Which was all bullshit. It never ever had anything to do with you. That is the name of a corporation that is completely and separate from you. The interesting thing of it is that, do you have an interest in that corporation? Well, I suppose so. Because you're using your lifetime and your life sweat working, not knowing that you are not that entity. So you're being harvested. You're being traded upon, slaved, enslaved, bonded, without your consent, without transparent, without disclosure. Because if there's in a contract no full transparency, no real disclosure, the contract is null and void. Yes. So technically, all the birth certificate bonds that were created that our parents so lovingly thought they're doing it for, for, for God and country or whatever, uh, all of that at the end of the day is bullshit and all of it is fraudulent. The interesting thing is it's very hard to prove that. Because who knows? How, how, can you remember when you were one week old, maybe, or three days old, what happened? No, no you can't. of course not. No, but my parents are dead. You know, so where's the witness? Okay, how, how has this been conveyed to us? So we're on our own. We, we need to go into this mission and search for the truth, search for the reality. And in that way, eventually we'll get to the bottom of this rabbit hole and then we can fix it. And it's easier to fix than what most people think. Uh, not that I'm saying everybody should go and do this. You need to do a lot of research and nobody must ever believe a word I'm saying. Okay? Yes, but you're referring to the possibility of an escape, or for want of a better term. To get out of the control of government entities or out of the authority which they don't have over us without our consent. Is this the same as uh, going post-liminary or attaining a post-liminary status? It's, it's exactly the same as post-liminary status, except that the post-liminary concept is beautiful because you're just saying that you know, you, 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 you're not choosing sides. I'm neutral. This is a war out there. These people are engaged in commerce. They're competing. They're fighting against each other. And they're killing each other. And, and they're hurting a lot of people. And all you do when you go post-liminary is I don't want to play. I'm neutral. I'm peaceful, I'm neutral, I'm non-belligerent, and this is me, okay? So you do whatever you want. I'm not, I, I do not choose sides. And that way is the only way to change the system 100%, is to walk away from the two polarities, left wing, right wing, okay? Doesn't the left and the right wing belong to the same bird? Yes, it would be seen by some as Absolutely. the two wings of the one bird. Yeah, and when you vote, you register to vote, which is rather interesting because you doesn't matter which party you vote for it's just a new CEO of the same company there's nothing else out there in all the corporations it's just companies that you're voting for and they tell it you clearly and this is where everything is hidden in plain sight they tell you in the advertisers before election and you know this country is going into election soon they say to you clearly on the media and TV and everywhere register to vote or to vote register what it means if your name is on the voters' roll, you have voted. They tell you, register to vote. You don't have to vote. Register to vote. So once you've registered to vote, you, you've incorporated yourself into the corporation. You're part and parcel of that company. doesn't matter who you vote for, because it's the same entity. You just have to register with the company as an a employee of that company. So we are all government employed as far as government is concerned. None of us are, even if you're working for a company, how many companies on earth are there? If you think very carefully, it's a trick question. If you think about businesses and things out there, how many companies are there on the planet? Well, there would be tens of thousands, potentially millions, depending on the size of the company you're referring to. There's one single company. One. The Crown Corporation. It's the only real company. Across. Every single other one of them that is registered as a company has forfeited, forfeited those assets to the Crown Corporations. The Crown controls all of that. There's no such, no such thing as an independent business. You can't be in business as an independent. You can be in trade, but you cannot be in commerce. 
whose trade is private and commerce is public. Commerce is government and trade is outside of government. And trade works on donations and fees, not on prices. So if I would be charging you a fee to do this interview with me, that would be completely, totally out of commerce 100%. Because it's a fee that we agree upon. And if you don't want to pay that fee, then there's no, there's no agreement. Or you can give me a donation, and that is up to you how much you want to give me. But the interesting thing is there's no price attached to what I do. And that takes you out of commerce. But as long as you're still talking pricing, and you're still talking selling stuff, we screwed.